Let's take a walk through the H-Bridge and Geared Motor Demo LabVIEW project. Here I have the Digilent PMOD HB5 H-Bridge connected to MXP connector A. This is for motor control and sensor feedback. I'm powering the motor itself from the 5 volt supply on MXP connector B. The VI is already running and these two signals are the primary controls out to the HB5. This is the decoded version of the quadrature sensor signals coming back. And you can also manipulate the pulse width modulation that's applied as the enable signal. Now you can increase the duty cycle to cause the motor to start turning. The direction again is indicated right here. That's the maximum possible speed you can get for 5 volts. Bring it the other direction to reverse the direction of the motor. You see it's now counting down. I'd like to point out that if you get the front panel values back to defaults, the counter value persists because the counter is implemented in the FPGA fabric directly. So I'll reset the counter value. And let's try this again. When you keep the counter reset active, the counter value is read first and then cleared. This means that the counter is resetting each loop pass, which for this VI is every 100 milliseconds. This is a way that you can measure motor speed. This amounts to the number of counts recorded during the past 100 milliseconds. I'd like to point out that the duty cycle can be manipulated directly from the page up and page down keys. This way you can make unit step changes in the duty cycle. You can also experiment with the frequency of the pulse width modulation. You will find that at higher PWM frequencies you have a narrower range of speed control, but you also get smoother operation at lower speeds. You'll want to do some experimentation on your own to find out what is the best combination for your application. All right, let's start taking a look at the block diagram details. All of the Express VIs are located right here under the MyRio subpalette. This VI requires the encoder to deal with the quadrature encoder outputs, PWM to generate the pulse width modulated signal, and then digital out to manipulate the direction control. Let's begin with the encoder Express VI. Double click to open up the configuration panel. Under the channel area, you can pick from one of four encoder inputs. Two of those are on the MSP side. For this particular quadrature encoder, you want to pick quadrature face signal as the type. Here's the reset counter, the counter value, and the counter direction. All of those are available on the front panel. Next, this area of code works with the pulse width modulated duty cycle. That becomes our, our primary speed control for the motor. I'll take that duty cycle value, divide by 100 to get a value between 0 and 1. And here I'm comparing the value and taking one action if it's less than zero and a different action if it's greater than zero. The feedback node keeps track of the previous value for direction. The exclusive OR gate says if there's a difference between the current and the previous values, you generate a one here that passes through the OR gate and you pick zero duty cycle for this particular loop cycle and that shuts off the motor so you can change directions. The enable also gets involved here. The enable has to be enabled, otherwise you feed a zero into the PWM duty cycle. Here the primary control, which can be both positive or negative, is converted into a strictly positive value before going to the PWM Express VI. These values on the front panel control ranging from 40 hertz up to 40 kilohertz represent the entire valid range for the PWM Express VI. You have quite a number of possibilities for PWM outputs and I'm using the options to manipulate both of these parameters outside of the Express VI rather than treating those as constants. 
All right, the third Express VI for digital output takes care of manipulating the direction control for the PMOD HB5. Lots of possibilities for digital outputs. And you can pick the one that you need. I'm also indicating the direction as a front panel indicator. And again, that's derived by looking at the duty cycle control and we get one direction if it's positive, get another value if it's negative. Finally, to wrap things up, let's look at the air cluster. It propagates through, sets the order of events inside the loop. Pressing the stop button or an air condition breaks you out of the loop. You pass through simple air handler, execute a MyRio reset. And last, I'd like to point out that this loop is being paced here at 100 milliseconds.